Hi everyone, I'm Dao Ce Wang from Indiana University, and this quick talk is about the in situ lossy compression for adaptive mesh refinement applications use HDF5. And uh, different, different from sense work, this work we focus on the adaptive mesh refinement, the MR. It, is, it will change the mesh or the resolution based on the need of the simulation and uh, use finer mesh or higher resolution in more important region. And uh, in this way, we can save the computational and the storage costs. And in this work, we use the HDR5 and its computation filter because the um, computation filter will allow easier compression and decompression for the user. We just need to set the filter and uh, the data will be automatically compressed on its way to the, on its way to the disk. And uh, also the HDR5 provides us better usability, especially for the M data. The M data has a theoretical nature, as we just mentioned, we will have different levels or different resolutions that perfectly align with the HDR5. And uh, also the M data will contain a lot of metadata. For example, the, the, the refinement ratio of each level and the, and the domain size or the here, the box is the position of the data, and with HDF5, we can easily manage and access this metadata. And uh, to nicely compress the metadata, we first preprocess it, and we then we also optimize the SC compressor we just mentioned by Dr. Tao, especially to optimize its efficiency for the AMR data. AMR data. But after that, we find out that we have a challenge on how to effectively use the compression filter on the M data. That is, for the compression filter, we must use chunked data. And it's a question for us to how to select the best chunk size. Um, in terms of the compression, we will want a large chunk size because a too small chunk size will result in compress um, data blocks, too many data, small data blocks one by one separately, that will result in both low compression ratio and the low compression throughput. And uh, because the compression takes most of the time in our work, we modified the data layout and the HDI5, the filter mechanism, in order to get a, to help us to use the biggest possible chunk size. Although we know that the HDI5 the big chunk size will hurt the performance of HDF5 itself. We still use a big chunk size because for the for the better overall performance. And I think there might be some trade-off or improvement space to balance the performance of compression and HDF5. And we also would like to bring this question to this, to this meeting. And uh, please feel free to talk with me if you have any thoughts or comments about this. And uh, after the optimization, we can find out that uh, first our method can improve the compression performance in terms of both compression ratio, here is the CI the ratio, and the reconstruction quality. Actually, the right hand side is our work. And uh, it is act actually almost lossless quality, and uh, we can still reach uh, about 24 times compression ratio. And uh, if you are running the uh, large scale MI applications, this is something you want to consider. And by, by the way, that's Warpex simulation. And we can also improve the IO performance compared, compared to the previous solution and uh, compared to the no compression solution. And that's it. All right, thank you. Any quick questions later? I have, I have one. Okay, go ahead, Alexander. So when you say large chunk size, how what is the size? Oh, almost let's say sixty-four cubes or one twenty-eight cubes. One twenty-eight kilobytes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I have a comment. Uh, I think it's not very accurate statement to say that big chunk uh, hurts the performance. It really depends what you're doing, what your access pattern is, and. Uh, Big chunk is usually very good. Oh, right. 
So uh, if you have other way to let's stop. Okay, okay. This is more general. So can when you have a lossy compression, right? Yeah. And the thing is, what you compress get lost. It has different credibility. So how do you select what kind of a pattern you're going to get lost, and how do you guarantee the last ones has less credibility than the ones you kept? You mean how do I select what, what to compress? What kind of thing? What kind of information you get lost, and uh, how critical that is? Actually, basically, we'll have different metrics to to see how we compress the data and what we lost. And uh, one of the most general metrics is just like this: the visualization. If the reconstruct data looks very similar to the original data, then I think. That's yeah. it. That would be acceptable. And uh, uh, for different applications, there will be. I, I can give a comments. If you, like yeah. the, we, we do have other studies on this call how yeah. to control the error. So for some uh, scientific application, specific application, they have specific analysis tools. And we specific analysis the error impact on those analysis tools so that we can reverse compute what kind of error bound or what kind of control method that we should be using for their specific uh, post analysis quality. So does that mean it depends on the data you are compressing? Yes, yes. In in some cases, yes. Now, in other words, do you make a decision without reversing? Uh, in we have general uh method that 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 like Dalton mentioned, we have general me uh, metrics that we can use uh, towards a, a traditional um like PSNR or SSIM analysis. But for what we collaborated, like the cosmology, they have specific analysis that we want to guarantee their analysis. Uh, so that we can provide an um, even higher compression ratio. So it doesn't depend on the specific data rather than just kind of uh, Yeah, we can, and we also have a like, general method. We also have specific data. All right, thank you so much.